All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to finish up the uh, waistband stripe on the underside of the fuselage. You see that we still need to um, get that painted. So what I want to do is make sure that the airplane isn't sitting on anything nasty. All right, so let me just turn it a little bit here. I don't want to turn everything crosswise because it's uh, uh, just not really necessary. So we're going to use the acrylics. We've got the brush, something with a flat end. I don't know. I don't know the names of all these brushes. Some of them come to a point. Some are flat at the end. We want to use something flat. The pointier brushes are more for spot detailing and fine work. This is not really that. It's a broad, <coughs> a broad area. So I've cut the tape into strips, and this is, these are all straight lines. We don't have to do anything fancy on the cuts of the tape. And we just need to make sure that we're um, in the right spot here. And you can see there's a little bit of touch-up I need to do on the green and white. You know, nothing's ever really perfect. But you get as close as you can, and then with the touch-up brushes, you just fix whatever needs to be fixed. In this case, the frog tape that I'm using, which is a, a high grade of painter's tape, frog tape. Good stuff. Works like a champ. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, and mark these all off, or tape them, mask them all off, rather. Uh, we're pretty good on this line, but not that one. So we're on the underside of the airplane, so a little bit of dirt on there. Some dust or something off of the mirror. Here we go. We're just uh, yeah, good on that line, and we'll just bring this one over. So that's a little off. But I'm not gonna. You know what? Let's fix. Let's fix it a little bit, I guess. I can fix it on the side too. That's better. And then uh, mask it off, and then we'll do some painting. I think that's a straight line. Let's see. There to there is good. That almost does both sides of that, doesn't it? I'm gonna say yes. It does. Of uh, masking tape. Put that on right there. Right there. Okay, now we can finish this up. Stay on there. This, lately, this this roll of frog tape I have has been lifting a little bit, which pisses me off. Oh, it doesn't really make me angry, but I didn't expect it to happen with this stuff. I've, I've had the tape and kept it in the container, but I probably had it for a month. Maybe that's it's just got an expiration date whether you keep it in the can or not. I don't know. This is the first, or actually the second model I've used it on. It's better than the blue tape though, for sure. Both in um, tacking, which is lighter than the blue tape. I had problems with the blue tape lifting some of the finish off a couple of times. Just at little spots. And, you know, that requires a lot of work to go back and fix. So, when I started using this tape, I mean, I had really no problems with that at all. Which is such a relief. But, it might be a little too low tack, in which, in the word by which I mean it. Now it's lifting a little bit. I have to be very careful uh, after I've applied it to go back and double check, make sure that hasn't happened. We have no lifting right before. And all you want to do really is when you're applying it to your lines. Um, just run a fingernail along it, just to make sure it's seated. 
seated against the airplane, against your work, properly before you start uh, before you start painting. So this is much easier than spray application. If I was going to spray this thing, I'd have to mask off the whole tail and the, the forward section of the fuselage and then do what I'm doing here all the way around. And with the compound curves, when you're taping with straight tape around compound curves, you end up with a lot of distortions. And it's just a lot more difficult than if, with this way I can just do it in sections. I did the sides and then I did over the top where the curves are and then the bottom last. Um, but you see, I, I don't have to do all the extra masking. Ooh, we got a little lifter there to touch that up with yellow paint. Um, and but you can see that it makes a huge difference in, in the amount of labor um, and time on ma spent on masking. Try to always look. Not only that, but I'm not I'm not spraying that toxic waste um, into the atmosphere and you know, c collecting any of it in my lungs, which always bothered me too. I don't like respirators. I'm one of those idiots that does this using the breathing method where you, know, you basically while you're spraying you don't breathe and while the cloud dissipates you walk away take a breath in the uh, in the open of course all the spraying is done outside and again with that it's problematic for the camera because then you know I'd have to either wear the camera or reposition it outside and you know all that stuff and you know that's just gets to be more than I want to do I I just want to show you a bit about what I'm doing talk about how I do it you know show you what I can insofar as it's not interfering with um, I don't know, the way I want to spend my time doing this. You know, the way I want to spend my time doing this is by doing this and then spending as little time as I have to on the, on the camera, on the documentation. I apologize for that, but that's, that's just the way it is. I don't, you know, I look at this more as, you know, <clears throat> a guy building models on camera versus a guy, you know, a cameraman <clears throat> making a model, if that makes sense. Um, so my focus is heavily on this side and lightly on on the documentation side. And that's just, I'm, you know, maybe that'll hurt me in the end. I don't know. But I figure if I do enough of these projects on camera. If you didn't get a sense of everything I'm doing this time, you'll get a different. You know, I'll, re I'll record other processes when I'm as I go forward. That maybe I didn't cover this time, um, and you'll you know over time everybody will get a sense. And as if anybody's paying attention, I don't know, but you'll get a sense of the of the entire workflow and the entire. Uh, catalog of techniques and so forth that that are brought to bear on the on these projects right does that hope makes sense so let's go ahead and uh, good thing another good, good thing about acrylics is they dry pretty quick not still wet uh, tacky but I can at least lift the tape now and you see we get an, a nice uh, clean line with this stuff and again you want to be careful peeling the tape and where you put it and because the paint on the tape is probably uh, not 100% dry either. Watch your fingers so you don't pick up paint on your fingertips and then touch the uh, touch the airplane somewhere else. So there's a little touch up I'll need to do with that stripe with the white paint. That one came out pretty clean. You see here I got a, a little bit of green paint to apply there and that's the this is the toxic uh, spray so I'll just spray a bit of that into the cap use the touch-up brush to just straighten this line here. The white paint just comes out of another uh, tube. It's an acrylic, which I have right here. I'm going to clean touch-up brush. 
right? Touch up brush, very pointy, right? <clears throat> we can do this now already because that red has set up enough. Let me see if I can do this on camera as well as I do it. Nobody's looking. And already I see that I'm a little bit more unsteady here. Uh, and part of that's the angle I'm coming at it from. Less than optimal angle here. Let's try it this way. So we just want to kind of clean that up a little. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, we want it to be as good as we can get it, but it's on the underside underside of the airplane, and you know, unless it's hanging up near the ceiling, nobody's gonna. Look at that. I know it's there. That's why I'm doing this much at least. We yeah. like it better when they come out clean. But still look here. Uh huh. Better than it was. Alright, and then uh, there's a little spot over here in the green. Let's see if I can get in close enough with my finger to support this. There we go. Another one here. Whoa, look at him go. He's unsteady as hell. Alright. Uh, maybe I'll go this way here. Uh, we'll just we'll straighten that up with the green. I'm not happy with that, so. At any rate, that's now you get the idea of how that goes. It wasn't. <coughs> I didn't do the best job on camera, so I'll probably after I switch everything off, I'll come back at this, turn the airplane a little more, and, and get in there and fix that up properly. But anyway, now at least you've seen how we get these lines on here. We'll try to get them as straight as we can, keep the tape uh, lines as clean as we can get them, and then touch up if there is a slight flaw or failure of the tape or of our application of it or <laughs> any combination of those things. Um, I guess I don't know, I've got this here. This is a slightly different yellow. This is not the yellow that I painted with, but let's see how we do with this little spot here. Yeah, we need the darker yellow. Make that disappear. And remember, everything we're going to give this airplane an overall final clear coat. And what that does is it settles up any uh, variations in the levels of, of the paint. So if I've got a heavier layer of the green than I do of the white or the red, uh, when I spray that clear coat on, that, that flattens. That, that gets everything kind of flattened out. And then once again, it, it's an overspray after the, it goes on after the decals. Uh, it helps secure the decals and, and protect them from uh, rot from the weather or any of that kind of stuff that happens with uh, water slide decals. You get these on, let everything dry, and then you come in with that clear overspray and that puts a, a nice coating over the top that secures everything for posterity <laughs> or until the damn thing falls off a shelf or gets hit by something. One of the kids throws a ball at it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Any of the stuff that goes on. The monkey business. But anyways, uh, so, you know, that's that's our deal. Um, I'm going to leave it upside down for a minute. Actually, I am going to turn it around so I can uh, attach the uh, aileron push rods. It's, uh, I should mark the ailerons first. Uh, let me flip it back over. Touch any of the painted area. Let's get her back up on her feet. Her legs, her landing gear. There we go. Uh, I'll show you the push rod thing. Right. 
so we got these painted up. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, the around push rods. And I'll be clipping off the ball ends of these. I just wanted the wire in there. Because I'm going to drill out top and bottom. I should be able to, when I drill out in the upper wing and lower wing, when I, uh, in the upper wing area, since it's a thicker cord here, this, this area is thick, I should be able to lift this up and set the lower pin and only have to put glue on the lower pin. The upper pin should just remain captured, right? See what I'm saying? We're in, it will drop and set, and this should still be captured uh, at the top. So that should allow me to install this cleanly without scratching, uh, scratching the wings or damaging the paint. At least that's my hope. Uh, we'll leave this pin longer than the lower pin. The lower pin will be cut off fairly short. Not too short. I want it to I want it to be captured in there with the adhesive, uh, but I have to leave the top longer so that it remains captured in inside of the wing uh, opening, the hole that I make in the upper wing. Right. So we got two of those, one for each uh, wing. And but what I need to do before I can install that is I need to mark uh, the ailerons. I've got the upper wing surface, uh, the top wing, the upper surface marked. I haven't done the underside of the top wing, and I have done neither the upper or lower surface of the lower wing. I need to mark all of that uh, before these can go in. So, um, uh, let me see if I can find my pen. There we go, fabric castle. All right, so. In this. Oh yeah. So this is the pen I like to use. It's it's Faber Castell. Castell. Uh, it's an ultra fine point. The thing about this, it's better than a sharpie. Is uh, the sharpie lines? You well, if you make a mistake, like I sort of did there, um, with the Faber Castell pen. With this pen, you can just wet your finger and wipe it off and do it over. With the sharpie, it's on there for good. And the only way it'll get up that off would be with a paint thinner or lacquer thinner, and that'll that'll just damage all the paint and everything else. So what I'll need to do here is probably try to paint a little bit there, just do a little touch up with the red paint to cover that 